Facebook. Good morning, everyone. Um, you're probably watching this through Facebook at the moment. We've had some major technical difficulties this morning, and uh, we are hoping that the service will run as normal. We've got a couple of minutes before that service starts, but uh, do pray because actually uh, the people behind the scenes today have been frantically trying to get this sorted. So we'll start in just a minute or so, giving chance for Paul to bring people into the meeting room that are joining us. Uh, what we're not sure at the moment is whether there's going to be lots of sound in the background. Uh, we suspect that Zoom has done an update overnight or in the last couple of days and hasn't explained quite what the ramifications for us are. I think the good thing that we learned this morning, it sounds terrible, but the good thing is that we're not alone. That other churches are experiencing uh, the same. So, so um, let me welcome you this morning. It's 11 o'clock now. We're going to be slightly lower in number because obviously people have got other things going on. But I want to welcome you this morning. Um, and I want to say a big thank you to all those who are behind the scenes, uh, to Paul and to Mike, because as you can imagine, the last 45 minutes have not necessarily been uh, what you'd expect at the beginning of a service. Actually, it's been quite um, busy. It's been um, traumatic, lots of phone calls, lots of text messages. Um, so I'm going to start this morning by praying. I'm going to ask those who are on Zoom um, just to try and be quiet at this moment. We're not sure whether your mics are muted or not at the moment. So let's just be still. Uh, a different way of starting our service today. Um, but let me pray. Father God, we, we pray that as we... Uh, Father, try and work out what's... right again father i thank you for those who have been instrumental in making this work uh, but we pray now father that actually this service will run smoothly that we will understand uh, you better in our lives and that lord this won't detract from who we are and what you've called us to be so father god we pray this in jesus name amen um i've just had a message through saying that a lot of people can't hear me on zoom um if you can't, then uh, please jump over to our Facebook page. Um, we are desperately trying to work out what's going on at the moment. Um, but hopefully a lot of people can hear me. Um, I will continue as if you can hear me. And uh, then if there is problems, then maybe, just maybe, we might need to say, right, we're going to stop uh, the service today. And uh, we're going to encourage you to pray um, in your groups on your own. Um, and if you can't hear me, then really just make up what, um, what you think I'm saying. Um, so normal uh, messages. Um, thanks, Nicholas says she can hear me in Wales. So that's all right. The Welsh have got their internet sorted. Um, normal things. Uh, type prayers in the chat if there are things you want to pray for. Now, we're hoping Catherine's connection is going to be okay. But we can't guarantee anything today so but please do continue to put in prayer requests there um, also we, we may not be having breakout rooms later on today just because we're not sure if anyone can hear anyone but certainly we'll try and work out if that is the case um, i know that's a really important part of our service today and uh, we'll make sure that um, you can be a part of that and also if you're watching us on facebook welcome i'm sorry if you hear lots of um pinging in the background, um, but that's just the reality of where we are today. One of the downfalls is that unfortunately, um, Paul Edwards has got more responsibility this morning because we couldn't get Mike's uh, system with Zoom to work. So Paul's going to um, uh, kind of share the, the songs in the moment that we're going to sing. Tim Bliss is going to be leading us in uh, singing this morning, and we're really grateful for that. And uh, we're going to sing two songs now. First, All Heaven Declares. But I'm going to give Paul a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds, just so he can get his computer ready. And hopefully you'll be able to hear uh, this song that we can sing together. So let's sing together, All Heaven Declares, and then Across the Land. So I'll hand over to Paul now, who hopefully will have his screen ready. All Heaven Declares 
Thanks, Tim. And now Paul's going to play our second song this morning uh, across the lands. Um, like I say, if you can't hear us on Facebook, uh, please do uh, jump over. Sorry, on Zoom, please do jump over to Facebook. As you imagine, there's lots of people running around in the background at the moment trying to sort this. But I hope that in all of this, we will know the peace of God. So I'm going to uh, we're going to sing our second song now across the land.
Thanks, Tim. Um, we, uh, at one point there, were very close to calling the whole thing and saying, actually, we need to stop and uh, come back. But I think, actually, it's important we carry on. So if the audio is quiet, I'm sorry. If uh, it's not quite going as smoothly as normal, I'm sorry. Um, but actually, I think within sometimes the, uh, the disorganized nature, God still speaks. And the moment I said to the uh, tech team, do we call it? I immediately felt that voice saying no, because actually in something we're doing, whether it's really quiet, whether you can't see the audio, all those kind of things, maybe God is speaking to us here this morning. Let me pray again, and then hopefully we'll have the highlight of the week, which is Zoe's uh, talk this morning. But let me pray and uh, hand this all over to God. Father God, we, we come again this morning unsure of why it, what's happening is happening. Not sure how to quite sort it. Not sure what's going on behind the scenes. But Father, thank you that you are the Lord of all, that you hold us and sustain us. And we pray this morning, Father, that actually, actually we're going to stop talking about the difficulties now and to just commit all of this to you, to say that you are the king who can speak through so many different ways. So, Father, take all that we are and all that we hope to be, the God across the land, that you are uh, the one whom heaven declared. And we thank you for this opportunity to come and worship together in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, the busy man that is Paul this morning is going to, bring us uh, Zoe's video uh, this week as uh, she uh, kind of talks to our younger members of the family today. I think Paul's trying to do a hundred things at once, so I'll just uh, <laughs> let him, there we are. Hey kids, today we're going to learn more about lights. Does anyone know what our church logo is? It's a lighthouse and our slogan is a light for Christ. God is a bit like a lighthouse. Lighthouses are really strong because they have to stay sturdy against the crashing waves. That's similar to God. God is our rock and our strength. Lighthouses are also very noticeable. They are very tall. They have cool red and white stripes and they have a huge light. Now, you may not look like this, but as Christians, we are called to stand out and be different like Jesus was. A lighthouse is also used as a landmark. Boats looked at the lighthouse to figure out where they were in relation to everything else. This then helped them navigate their way back to shore safely. We are a bit like those boats sometimes. It's hard to navigate our way through life, especially when it's a bit dark and stormy. But when we orientate our lives around Jesus, he can lead us on the right path as we look to him. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you are our lighthouse and that you guide us and show us the way. Please help us to be lights too and help us to be a blessing to others. In Jesus name, Amen. Why don't you try and make your own lighthouse like this one this week? You can use all sorts of things that you can find around your house. Don't forget to paint those red and white stripes. And let's worship together now. Can you guess what song we're going to sing? In my wrestling, in my dance, in my failures, you won't walk out. Questions your truth will hold Your 
thank you very much there, uh, Zoe, for that this morning. It's uh, great to see your energy in this time. And perhaps some of us have been a little bit uh, kind of just struggling with the lockdown for a little bit at the moment. But uh, thank you that. And thank you for our children for, for engaging each week and telling us how much you enjoy what Zoe oh, yes, is doing. Yes. I'm going to do our reading this morning. Uh, it's from Luke 24. And it's verses 25 to 35. It says this. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart. And he's talking to people on the Emmaus road as they were journeying together and Jesus appeared to them. How foolish you are and how slow of heart you are to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what he said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it's nearly evening. The day is almost over. So we went to him to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, and he broke it. And, he gave, and then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon. And the two told what happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. We've uh, been looking at this series on, on, on gifts, the gifts that God gives us. And Amy spoke last week on that gift of hospitality. And this week we are going to speak on the gift of understanding. Now, some may wonder why we've chosen the, uh, the, the passage that talks about the Emmaus Road, because actually we should have had that weeks ago after Easter. But there's a verse in there that for me always, always rings a sense of wonder and awe. It's the, it's the passage that basically just says that Jesus explained to them what he'd said in the scriptures. These two disciples heard Jesus' point of view of how scripture all spoke into his life. What an amazing passage, what an amazing scripture that would be. If only they'd written it down. You never know, it might be hiding in a cave somewhere. But if they'd written it down, if we knew it, I wonder what those passages would say. You see, understanding is a real gift. We can understand what's going on around us uh, in our situations, in the, our workplaces, in families. We can understand the different dynamics that are going on. Would it be interesting to understand what others are thinking? Maybe a good thing sometimes, maybe not so much another time. Maybe a gift of understanding of why things are happening. Why is it things are happening in the way that they are? You know, this, this passage in Emmaus Road really helps us to delve into this gift of understanding. And, and the important gift I think that we would want is to understand what is God doing? What is God doing? It's a question that probably many have asked at the moment. And I think we need to be clear here and now. No theology, or I, I certainly do not think that for one moment that God sent this pandemic in order to teach us a lesson. But actually, what we need to start to see is, what is God doing because of what's happened? Look around, see, understand how people are responding, how people are longing for a different way of life, are longing for a deeper relationship with God, are turning to prayer. Many of you will know that I'm a big superhero fan. And I remember after the atrocities of 9-11, uh, many years ago but one of the comics did something very strange that we may not quite get but they drew their character spider-man in a mint in amongst the the, uh, the 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 trying to clean up the trying to save people the trying to help people and i remember the uh the authors being interviewed and they said something along the lines of yes they did it because actually children would like to think that uh that spider-man was there but actually they did it more for the adults to realize that actually there's something different going on. There's a power that sometimes 
we don't understand at work, trying to draw people together. And we would want to name that power as God. It draws us together, that in these times of difficulty gives us hope. You know, Psalm 3 tells us not to lean on our own understanding, but to what the gift of understanding that God gives us. That second bit isn't in there by that either. The gift that maybe we want to talk about today is understanding who God is. Understanding what God is doing through others and through ourselves. To understand where God is at work in people's lives, in the pandemic that we see around us. Where is God at work? Where have you seen God at work this week? Maybe as we go into this next coming week, where do we see God at work? You know, I see God at work on a Thursday evening when we clap for our NHS staff. I see God at work in the NHS workers that we have in our congregation. I see God at work in the conversations, in the home groups that are meeting in the many different ways in which we are understanding our world and and what this new world looks like. I see God at work. And maybe that's the gift of understanding that we need to have this week, of understanding where God is at work in your life and in the world. And may God grant us the gift of understanding to perceive what he is doing in our lives and in the lives of those around us. Amen. Well, I'm going to try and hand over to Catherine now. Um, Catherine, are you there? Yes, I think you are there, Catherine. Are I you am there? Him, yes, good to see Brilliant. you. Brilliant. I will hand over to you now. And um, thank you. Good morning, everybody. And uh, despite the technical difficulties, we're here. We're here with you. And... Uh, So we've got some prayers um, to lift up to you. One in particular that um, I've just had from Hazel, and she's asked us to pray for Vicky's friend. I think Vicky lost contact with her a little while ago. But she saw on the news that her friend had lost her eight-month-old baby to Kawasaki, which is a children's disease caused by COVID-19. I don't know the name of Vicky's friend, but I, I lift her up to you, Laura Lord. I pray that you could help her and her family through this terrible time. We pray that that little baby is now safely in your arms. Lord, we lift up all the families that have lost babies and children, and we ask particularly for your comfort and help for them. Lord, God, thank you that you know us, you love us, and you want what's best for each one of us. You're with us in our joys and in our sorrows, and we can do all things through you, for you are our source of strength. Won't we falter and fail? You, you uphold us. Unlike technology, Lord, you never fail us. When we're down, you send your Holy Spirit to remind us of your loving presence. Lord, there's so much to fear in this life, but you tell us to be strong and courageous. You will not let us go. Lord, it's been lifting, uplifting to see people here clapping for carers and key workers, children drawing colourful rainbows, And we've been very much moved by the virtual coming together of people from various churches to sing the UK blessing. Lord, when this is all over, may the feeling of unity continue. And may the love and empathy we feel towards each other be a lasting legacy. Father, just as there's a a global pandemic that's affecting all of us, I pray that there'll be a global coming together of all peoples. We've seen the suffering this virus is causing in the country, in this country and in other countries around the world. And in our suffering, we have unity with each other. There's a feeling of being in this together. May we learn, Lord, to love and care for each other, whatever our backgrounds and cultures. Lord, in the words of the worship song, we ask you to open the eyes of our hearts to see you, to see you high and lifted up. We pray for revival in this country and abroad. We pray for more people everywhere to come to know you and love you. For it is through you that we have lasting hope. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, Catherine, for uh, leading us in prayers there. Um, I think the good news for everyone, I said I wouldn't mention it again, but it looks, I've just looked online, it looks as if the problem is not to do with us, there is a problem at Zoom. So uh, hopefully that means it will be sorted ready for next week. Uh, just uh, to say a couple of notices, uh, we haven't got our slide this week that we normally would, so um, but hopefully please continue to give to the food bank. Uh, there is still need there. And also uh, Community Enterprise PL12 are still helping those who are vulnerable. If you need more details, please come and contact me and I'll be able to let you know. The other thing that started last week, and you will have got a quick email, is Tudor uh, is, is leading us on a centering prayer at 10 o'clock on Thursday morning for the next few weeks. So if you want to know more about that, again, please get in contact with us. I understand there was a, a small group that met last week and uh, certainly more people would be welcome. It's a much a quieter time of prayer uh, with lots of silence and reflection. So if that's something you would be interested in, then please do uh, let us know. Um, I am now going to hand back over to Paul, who's going to bring our final song. We're going to have another blessing uh, today as well. But let, I'll explain that in a moment. And um, first of all, we will sing Open the Eyes of Our Heart, Lord. Let's, uh, let's sing together. Despite the technology, that God will open our eyes to see the wonders that he's doing around us. That's, that's it.
thanks, Tim, for leading us this week uh, in those songs. Before Paul plays the blessing, I just want to say a couple of things. Um, this is uh, a blessing that someone pointed out to me on Facebook this week, and it'd be good to end each service with a different blessing from a different context. And you'll see this is a slightly different one uh, to last week. Same, same song, slightly shorter, but slightly different. And I hope it blesses you as it did me. I think when Catherine prayed earlier, she prayed and I kind of just kind of, a, kind of try and remember what she said. But actually, God, uh, even though the technology might let us down, God won't. And I just want to say this morning, if, if this is the first time you've uh, logged on to our services, uh, usually it's a lot smoother. Um, but uh, besides that, there may be something's touched you this morning. And I want you to know that God loves you. Each service, I'm going to remind each one of us that actually this is not something to keep to ourselves. This is something to share with the world. And the message I want to share today is that God loves you. No matter who you are, no matter what you think you're doing wrong or have done wrong, God loves you. And the message of hope, the message of love, and the message of peace. Yes, there's time when we need to say sorry for the things we've done wrong. But actually, we don't need to know God's judgment first. We need to know the love of God first. To have a deepening relationship with him. So this morning, if you are someone who needs to hear that, get in touch with us. And the church isn't closed, we're open, we're here, it's just in a different way. We still love to talk and journey those faith moments with you. Christianity, I believe in God, God is not a dead faith, it's alive and well and living. So I pray this morning you might know something. Paul's going to play our final blessing for us today, and I hope it blesses you. And please do let me know if there's a blessing you'd like to see next week. If I get inundated with loads, we can't play them all clearly, but we'll pick one from each week. And um, I hope they do uh, really speak. Please do stay around afterwards for breakout rooms. We're going to attempt them. If you haven't been able to join us on a Zoom, but you're on Facebook, try logging back in. We may be able to um, sort it out. Uh, it seems as if the most of the UK at the moment are having issues with Zoom. Um, so as someone has pointed out to me, I seemed a lot chirpier after I realised it wasn't MPP uh, that was just having the problems, it was everybody else. Um, but I think that just, uh, it's not necessarily that I'm pleased, I just, it's a relief. So uh, please do come and join us if you're able to, uh, but Paul will play Blessing now and afterwards we will go into breakout rooms if we're able. God bless you all.
thank you, uh, Paul, for sharing that with us. And I think Paul's now going to try and work us into breakout rooms. If you have issues with sound or visual, then we can only apologise. But I believe that the Zoom engineers are now working on it. But hopefully very soon you'll have uh, invites to go into breakout rooms.